What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a rather interesting video for you on creating templated content basically. Before you click away because of that scary title, basically a lot of people have been asking me how I create my backgrounds as such. I usually take an image, apply a nice color grading to it, a bit of blur, and then I add my image to the center over here. How exactly do I do it? Well, I use Affinity Photo instead of Photoshop because you pay once off and I'd much rather support Affinity. Oh, looks like there's an update. I'll be downloading that after this video. Basically, as you can see, I've got a LUT color adjustment. I've got a background group where I put all of the images that I can toggle between them. And I've got my text up front. Basically, this is what my output file looks like. I've got my project file over here, which we have open, and I've got all of my wallpaper files over here one by one with the nice little image in the center and the blurred out color graded background. Over here in used, I have a hundred and something wallpapers that I've already used in videos that I won't be using again. Basically, what I do is go ahead and source a lot of images that are all in the Creative Commons or I'm allowed to use, drag and drop them into Affinity Photo, and they're all added to the screen as such. As you can see, however, if we go ahead and click between them, you can see that they are all different sizes and none of them are exactly the same. Well, maybe one or two, but it would be a pain to go ahead and align everything like such, put it in the center, and then move it into my background group over here. It would take quite a while to do that for all of these different images because they're all different sizes and aspect ratios. To mass center all of these horizontally and vertically and resize them so they fit while keeping the aspect ratio, it's a bit of a task, but it's a hell of a lot faster than going and doing this manually. What I do is I drag and drop all of them into my background group, but it doesn't really matter where these picture files are. Simply select all of the images you want to resize and position. As you can see, they're all different. And at the very top, I'll go to Arrange, followed by Align Top meaning that they're all aligned on the vertical top as such, and then arrange a line left, meaning they're all pushed to the left-hand side. So every single image here is now centered in the top left corner. I'll drag and drop it into the top left of my image as such, but they're still far too big. What do we do from here? Well, we'll unselect all of our images and we'll select just one. You can see that the 16 by nine aspect ratio here is quite different to this one over here, this is more of a square and it's bigger vertically than it is horizontally. Keeping that in mind, we'll go ahead and look for this transform window. I've got navigation, transform, history, channels, 32-bit preview, but we're looking for this transform window. Wherever this is hidden, you'll need to find it. I'm not exactly sure how to bring it back if you close it, if that's even possible, but you need to find transform. Then, once you've clicked on it, we can see that the width is not two times the height, meaning that it's most likely not 16 by nine and it's more square. So we'll go ahead and select the width because that's what we're gonna scale it to horizontally. So there'll be a bit of overhead on the vertical ends. Then we're gonna hit this little bar next to it, which locks the aspect ratio. Once it's locked inside of width, the W, I'll type in SW, meaning width of the canvas. We'll click anywhere else and as you can see, it scales it perfectly, so it's touching the left-hand side and it's touching the right-hand side. For some reason, this background group over here seems to be a bit blurred around the edges, but that's besides the point. Usually, I'll just go ahead and make it a bit bigger by holding Control and Shift and scaling it a bit out as such so that the corners aren't so blurred, but it's probably quite easily fixable. Anyways, besides the point, now that we've done that, I'll go ahead and arrange and then align middle to go ahead and center it. But usually what I'll do is I'll go through and do each of these before I align them to the middle. So I'll undo my previous action and we'll leave it say over here. I'll go across to the next one. As you can see, it's a bit closer to 16 by nine. So I'll go ahead and try SW, click somewhere else and there's a bit of overhead vertically. Great, next one, SW, click, next one, SW, click, Next one, SW click, SW click, and the last one, SW click. As you can see, these all have a vertical overhead, meaning that it's fine if we go ahead and move them up or down and center them vertically. We won't be having any open spots. So I'll select everything, grab one of these side nodes as such, hold control and shift, and I'll expand it just a tiny bit so that these corners aren't blurred and there's nothing showing from behind it. Then I'll go arrange, followed by align middle. Then I'll vertically push it up while holding shift 
and it will go ahead and lock to the center as such. If you don't have those locking lines, just simply make sure to enable snapping in the top over here. So to go through that whole process again, this time with less explanation, I'll drag and drop all of the files in, move them into the background, arrange top and arrange a line left. Move it to the top left, first image SW, next SW, next, 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 and the last one. Of course, making sure that the lock is enabled. Then I'll select everything, arrange, align middle, move it up vertically, and of course I can make it a bit bigger if I wanted. And that's basically it. Then I'll go ahead and save this image, disable it and delete it, next one delete, next one delete, as such until I've gone through every image that's here. And I've created all of the wallpapers templated to my liking. Now, of course, this is just a simple example of what you can do with this. And if you wanted to, you could, of course, disable this lock aspect ratio over here, meaning that your images will now stretch. So if I set SW, you can see it set the width. But if I go ahead and disable the lock and move this down to, say, 1920, you can see that it's adjusted it so that it's not keeping the aspect ratio. I could make it, say, 500, and you'll see what I mean, really. I can set SH under height meaning that it aligns to the height, and you can see it's still horribly distorted. SW, you're not really able to tell that it's distorted, but its original aspect ratio is not 16 by 9, meaning that we've lost quite a bit of vertical fidelity, and it's sort of crushed up. If there was someone in this image, they'd suddenly be short and fat, compared to when the image is correctly proportioned. But anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. This has been how to fit to canvas inside of Affinity Photo using width or height. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.